Welcome to Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Melissa Delp. I have a prototype of the game The Search for Planet X and I'm going to walk you through how to play. The Search for Planet X is a 2-4 to four player logic deduction game that requires an app to play. It's designed by Ben Rossett and Matthew O'Malley and is being published by Foxtrot Games. You're playing as astronomers who are scanning the night sky in search for Planet X. Each game the companion app will randomly determine the location of Planet X and the other objects according to a set of predefined logic rules. For example, there are four asteroid fields and each asteroid field is adjacent to at least one other asteroid field. That means they'll either be in two pairs or all four together in a band. You'll interact with the app to track objects, do research, and attend conferences. You'll score points by publishing theories and locating Planet X. The player who has the most points will be the more prestigious astronomer and win the game. The following setup is for standard mode. Step 1. Place the solar system board on the table with the standard 12 sector side showing. Orient it so that each player is facing a different side. Step 2. Place the sun board on top and place a sun marker in the hole. Rotate the sun board so the visible sky shows sectors 1 through 6. Step 3. Give each player a note sheet that corresponds to the side of the board they are facing. In this instance, the summer solstice. Also be sure to use the standard side with 12 sectors. Step 4. Each player selects a color and gains the following. Two target tokens, a player screen in their color to hide their note sheet, nine theory tokens in their color. In standard mode, players keep one of the dwarf planet tokens and return the other three to the box. You will need to provide a writing instrument. Step five, place the player pawns in sector one of the time track. The order should be random. Now it's time to open up the Search for Planet X companion app. Select Start New Game. Choose Standard Mode. Players using separate devices will need to enter the specific game code and join the game. Each player then selects their player color and their experience level. Beginner level is suggested for your first game. The app will give each player different starting information. When it says that an object isn't in a sector, cross off that object on your note sheet. If you're sharing devices, you'll have to select Add Another Player for other players to get their secret info. Once everyone has their starting information, select Start Game. To understand the gameplay, you need to know the logic for the game, the principles of astronomy. In standard mode, there are 12 sectors. In each sector, there is either one object or it is truly empty. These are the logic rules. There are two comets total, and each comet is located in a prime sector, so two, three, five, etc. And you'll see these on your sheet. There are four asteroid fields, and each asteroid field is adjacent to at least one other asteroid field. Each gas cloud is adjacent to at least one truly empty sector. I say truly empty because the sector with planet X appears empty in scans and targets. In standard mode, there are two sectors that are truly empty and then one that appears empty but really contains planet X. Knowing where the gas clouds are will help you rule out these empty sectors and deduce which one must be planet X. In standard mode, there is one dwarf planet. It is not adjacent to planet X, so knowing where the dwarf planet is might also help you rule out an empty sector or two as planet X. Now it's time to start playing. The player whose pawn is farthest back on the time track takes their turn. A player's turn consists of three steps. 
The first step is to take one of the four possible actions. You'll state out loud to the other players what you're doing, like I'm scanning for asteroids in sectors 6 through 11. Then you'll complete the action in the app and receive secret information that you do not share with the other players. Then you'll advance your pawn on the board a number of spaces on the time track equal to the amount of time the action took. Each action takes a specified amount of time, like targeting a sector takes four time units. The app will remind you how much time your action takes. If you end up in the same space as another pawn, move yours past any pawns already there and place yours in front of them. The last thing you do on your turn is advance the sun board, if necessary. If the arrow on the board is pointing to a sector without a pawn, turn it clockwise until it points to the sector with the pawn farthest back on the track. Now let's take a closer look at the actions you can take. These are all performed in the app. When you scan for an object, you choose which type of object you want to scan for, and then you designate which sectors you are scanning. The sectors have to be consecutive, and they must be in the current visible sky. The app will show you how much time that scan will take. It's less time if you're scanning a larger area, and more time if you focus on a small area. Let's say you scan for comets in sectors 2 through 5, which takes three time units. When you press scan, the app reveals that there is one comet here. There are two comets total, so you know that the other one must be in sector 7 or 11. Mark the information on your note sheet, but don't tell the other players. To take the target a sector action, you must spend one of your target tokens. So you can perform this action a maximum of two times during the game. You select one sector in the visible sky and the app will tell you exactly what is in that sector. A sector will appear empty if it is truly empty or if planet X is located there. When you research, you select one of the topics listed and the app will give you information based on the logic rule for that specific game. For example, if you pick dwarf planets and asteroid fields, it might tell you something like every dwarf planet is within two sectors or less of an asteroid field. Note the information on your sheet in this section here. You are not allowed to take the research action two turns in a row. You will need to perform a different action before you can research again. When you think you know where planet X is, you can take the Locate Planet X action, but beware! You also need to know what is to the left and right of Planet X. If one piece of information is incorrect, you fail and you've just wasted five time units. But if you are correct, then you let everyone know that you found it, but not where, and you trigger the end of the game. I'll walk you through the end of the game and scoring a little later in the video. Once you've taken your action, remember to move your pawn and then rotate the sunboard if necessary. This not only changes the visible sky throughout the game, but also triggers theory and conference phases. When the arrow points to this icon, you stop and have a theory phase. Having correct theories about the objects in different sectors is one of the ways to score points. First, each player can select up to one theory token and place it in front of their screen, but covered with their hand so it's not visible to other players. Then, in upcoming turn order, players place their theory face down on the outer space of a sector's peer review track. You can choose any sector, not just the visible sky. Theories from more than one player can go on the same space. After all the theories have been placed, advance all face down theories on the board one space toward the center. If any theory tokens reach the inner space, you conduct a peer review. Flip the tokens on the inner space face up, choose peer review in the app, and follow the instructions to indicate which sector an object is under review. The app will confirm if the theory is correct or incorrect. If it's correct, Reveal all the theory tokens in that sector, leave the correct theories, remove incorrect theories from the game, and penalize the owner by moving their pawn forward one space on the time track. 
Because the correct object has been discovered, no more theories can be placed in this sector. If the theory on the inner space is incorrect, remove the theory token from the game and penalize the owner by moving their pawn forward one space on the time track. Leave theories on the other spaces in that sector face down where they are. During the peer review, you can learn a lot of information about what is or isn't in a sector. When the sunboard arrow points to this icon, everyone attends a conference to learn more about Planet X. Choose the Planet X conference button in the app and then read the revealed clue to all the players. There's a section on your note sheet to record the information. The game continues with players taking turns with whoever's pawn is farthest behind on the time track until someone locates Planet X, which triggers the end of the game. Then each player whose pawn is at least one sector behind the player who discovered Planet X gets one last opportunity to score points. Those players can either submit theories or try to locate Planet X, but they cannot take any other action like targeting or scanning. If you choose to submit theories, you can submit one if you are one to three sectors behind, or you can submit two if you are four or more behind. If instead you correctly locate Planet X, you'll get points based on how far back you are, more points if you're farther back. Once everyone is finished, select End Game in the app and it will reveal the correct answers for each sector. First, you'll score theories. If there are any face down theories on the board, flip them face up, but keep them in the same spaces. Remove any incorrect theories and then score the correct ones based on the information on your note sheet. The first, or tied for first, correct theories in a sector earn a bonus point. Count up how many of these bonus points you have and record them first. Then you score points for each of your correct theories. The point value is based on the type of object. If you located Planet X, you'll score 10 points if you were first, or you'll score 2 points for each sector behind you were, so 8 points for being 4 sectors behind the person who first located Planet X. Total up your points and whoever has the highest score wins. So that's how to play standard mode. If you decide to play expert mode, there are a few differences. The board has 18 sectors instead of 12. You'll use the expert side of the note sheet and add the expert reference guide to your player screen. There are four dwarf planets with some additional logic rules, and there are five truly empty sectors instead of two. Most of the game plays the same, except you can submit up to two theories in each theory phase instead of just one. If you have any questions about the search for Planet X, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and please like, share, and subscribe.